In today's video, I'm going to be going over my controller settings as of May 2020 with the last update on console, with update 7, PUBG accidentally reset all of our controller settings, so I've been getting a lot of questions and also recommendations to make another one of these videos. So here I am in training mode uh, doing this. I recommend going to training mode because you can practice and see what everything does to your guns and your scopes um, right after you make the change. We can also do this from the lobby screen before you get into a match, and you can also do this in a live match. So. I'm in the corner of training mode, hopefully no one finds me, and let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to see here, we're going to do controller settings, and then I'm also going to give you guys some recommendations on the uh, game settings, which I think will help out a lot, especially if you're a new player. So first we have type A, type B, and type C controller presets. Type C was kind of a fail, so do not worry about that. We're just going to explain type A and type B. So they're going to default you to type A, and what this does is it makes your left trigger, which is the universal button for aim down scope, uh, two different things. So when you hold L, left LT, you're going to over the shoulder aim, this is called in PUBG, and if you double tap L, you're going to aim down sights. And aiming down sights is way more accurate in PUBG. Uh, so for a lot of players, we prefer going to type B because every time you hit L, no matter what you do, tap, hold, whatever, it makes you aim down sights, kind of like Call of Duty style, and I think this is preferred by most players. And then left bumper becomes over the shoulder, and it's nice having these broken down as two different buttons so you don't accidentally do this when you mean to aim down sights. So I recommend type B, and that's what most people have. And then we have invert X axis. I've never seen anyone invert this. A lot of players, or some players like me, invert the Y axis, just personal preference. And then we have our dead zone. So a lot of good players out there turn their dead zones very, very low. But I'm always confused by this because this is the responsiveness of your thumbsticks. And if your thumbsticks are loose, they're going to drift a little bit if your dead zone is too low. So a good way to test this is to put your thumbsticks all the way down to zero or one, whatever you want to do back out here and then spin your thumbsticks around and see what happens. See my character is slightly walking forward. Let's do it again. You can put your controller on a table maybe to make sure it's flat and you'll see what's drifting. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna keep moving this up and testing it out until nothing drifts on your controller and you could have them offset. They don't need to be the same number but I just found that eight eight works for me. And sometimes even then I get a little bit of controller drift and I'm bummed by that because I have a brand new Elite controller um, and you can see it's happening right there. So it's just, it is what it is. Uh, whatever you want to deal with is fine. Then vibration is personal preference. I've always just preferred having vibration on. I don't even notice anymore. Then the next few stats I've kept at default. So we have forward running sensitivity, movement sensitivity, and vertical sensitivity multiplier. So the first two here are just going to control how fast you move from walking to running. And honestly, there is some benefit to turning these up, but it just made me feel like my thumbsticks were drifting a little bit when I was doing a test. So basically, if you turn both of them up all the way, you'll notice that you don't really slow walk. You just immediately start running and there's less of a lag time from walking to running, which is really nice. It doesn't affect your sprint time. This is all run time in the game. When, when you click on left thumbstick, this is run. So again, personal preference, I'm just keeping that a default because I've been playing for over two years with it like that. Then we have vertical sensitivity multiplier. So this is a topic for a whole nother video. A lot of people prefer to put this down so it's easier to control their recoil. Uh, but basically this is a one-to-one -one ratio with your right thumbstick. So if you turn this down, let's just show you guys. If you turn it down to this, you're going to move a lot slower up and down. And if you turn it all the way up, it's going to increase, whatever you do is going to be magnified 1.5 times now. So 1.5 times your thumbstick movement, super fast up and down. That's also personal preference. I'm gonna to try to make another video about this because a lot of people have theories about vertical sensitivity multiplier. Then we have general sensitivity. And again, all of your sensitivity things should be personal to you, but you really should consider moving your general sensitivity up. I'm not saying it has to be 13, it can be more than 13, but this is really important in the game because if you're shooting here and then someone's behind you, you wanna be able to turn around fast enough where you can respond to them, especially if you're playing in first person. Even here at 13, it's not that fast, turning around, and if you have this any lower, say if it's at five, which is default, if you're shooting somebody here, and then you hear someone behind you, it's not gonna be this slow, but just imagine that would be a very slow uh, general camera, general sensitivity turnaround. And same thing if you're shooting in first person, and now you gotta turn around, that's pretty slow. You might get killed by the time it's already done. So some people have this cranked all the way up, which might be better for you, but for me, it kind of throws me off because a lot of times I use my cursor to pre-aim, so say there's a guy behind the car, I'm not aiming here, I'm aiming here with a cursor where I think he's gonna be, 
and then I snap right there. So if it's too fast, I'm gonna kind of lose my tracking on where I'm aiming. Even here, 13 sometimes, that can happen a little bit. So you wanna make sure you're always tracking with your cursor and then aiming in on uh, where your cursor just was. Uh, so going back to the settings, that's general sensitivity. I have mine at 13. Vehicle sensitivity is default. Aim acceleration is how fast your thumbstick or your scopes will move after you do a 50% movement with your thumbstick. So this is really for the movements where you're, say, say you're aiming down sights and then you hold right on your thumbstick, you start spinning around, it's how fast it will start to speed up. So you see it's, it's increasing speed here, but see it took a while to do that. Sorry, I don't wanna make anybody dizzy. See it's slow, faster, 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 faster. Aim acceleration makes that faster. Uh, so if you want to have really tight movements when you're adjusting right here, but then be able to go to the right really fast or to the left for that matter, then you're gonna want your aim acceleration really high. And most people who turn their aim acceleration up turn their scopes down. For me, I keep it at one, which is basically like off. And uh, I like it like that because of where my scopes are at. Then over the shoulder aiming, again, I like this really fast, kind of like general sensitivity because aiming over the shoulder is less accurate than aiming down sight. So most of the time when I'm using this, it's because someone's around a rock or someone's surprising me from behind, or a car's driving by, and I wanna be able to track it at a uh, faster rate. Then down to scope, so I have mine set up kind of uh, cascading here, so I go 997665, and I used to do this 98765, uh, at the end, uh, but I found that I liked having my one-time scope and my two-time scope the same, because they're pretty similar in my opinion, and then I just go down from there. There's a couple different strategies on this. Some people like to go really low on the one-times and two-times, higher in the middle, kind of like a triangle approach, and then lower at the bottom again, um, but I think that for me, I like to be able Able to be a little bit more nimble with the one and two time scopes because I'm usually using those to clear buildings and stuff. So again, say you're going over the hill, you know a guy's behind the tree, just don't know which one. I like to stay and aim down sights and just kind of predict where he's at. And if you took this down to three, which I'm just going to do for you guys, I know this is kind of slow going back and forth here, but if you make this three, this is what it looks like now trying to go back and forth between each tree. And yes, you can just cursor wait for them. Like, okay, where is he, where is he? And then aim down sights. But then you have to aim down sights and wait for your gun to get down sights. So for me, I've always just been a fan of having this a little higher. If you go too high, you're not gonna be able to control your recoil. So you gotta find that balance. And then whatever you pick, you gotta be able to hit those shots. So whatever you do, just make sure you have it somewhere where you can control recoil. Try shooting the tree at this distance. Make sure you can stay roughly on the tree. I'm kind of missing a little bit there. Not every shot is gonna be perfect or every magazine is gonna be great recoil, but it should be decent enough to where you can hit the tree for most of that magazine at that distance. Wasn't my best shooting there, but you guys get the drill. And then I just kind of put this down from there. And then you're gonna to wanna to have your 15 time scope all the way up because that scope is so slow. And I'll show you guys the eight time scope just as a reference. So what's nice about the eight time scope is first of all, you can zoom in and out by holding the right bumper and left thumbstick. So say you're using the eight time scope on this car very close by. So this is gonna be pretty, well, I have it at five. So it's not too bad going from left to right. Is he to the left side of the car? Is he to the right side of the car? But if you zoom out to four, to me, this is way easier to kind of go back and forth. Is he there, is he there? And you can zoom in, it's a little bit slower. And at a greater distance, that's the sun, this is gonna be a lot quicker, kind of scanning everything. Uh, so I think that works. But then the 15 time scope is very, very slow. So just make sure you have that up all the way. And those are things that you should just practice doing with your sensitivities on your scopes. You can do this with the three times and the four times and so on and so forth. And then finally here, moving to gameplay. So I have my DVR disabled. Some people say this helps with crashing. I'm not sure if that's true, but I just disable it because I don't really mind. Then the kill feed, you can either have this graphic or text. Sometimes text is easier to understand whether you knocked a player or killed the player, but I think that the graphic looks cooler and then the knock emoji shows that you knocked the player and then if it's just the gun, it means you killed them. Uh, then I keep my colorblind normal because I like the traditional red zone and blue zone, but if you wanna change this, you can. And then I recommend changing your crosshair color to something that stands out. A lot of people pick like pink or purple or bright yellow, but sometimes yellow on mirror mark can kind of blend in a little bit. So for me, pink seems to be something that you can always see. Uh, but again, personal preference or just your favorite color. Then unless you're a new player, you should probably turn your on-screen button hints off. Then we have the network debug statistics, which shows your ping information on the top left-hand side of the screen. They made this more streamlined now, so I'm just gonna leave it on. Then we have the compass background. You should definitely have this on, it makes it easier to see. 
Then PUBG just recently added in the new uh, flash effect for loot. So if you drop loot, it flashes or pulses. It's a little weird because it's kind of a dark color, um, but I noticed that this is easier to spot out, especially in dark rooms. So I prefer having it on pulse instead of glow. Then if we go back down, we have functionalities. So you're definitely gonna wanna have auto replace weapon skins. So if you have any cool weapon skins that uh, replaces when you pick a gun up. And then really you're gonna want all of these default firing modes set to full auto because I, I feel like that's just uh, a preference for most people, right? If you pick up an AR or an SMG, you want it to be on full auto. And then there's some secondary firing modes. I don't know of an SMG that doesn't have auto spray. So I'm not sure why this is here. Maybe there will be one eventually. Um, then we have default firing mode for ARs, full auto. Secondary, you want this to be on burst. If you're picking up the M16, there is no auto. So then I want it to default to burst instead of single fire, but that's personal preference. But otherwise, you're going to want your M4 and QBZ and all that stuff to be on full auto. Same thing for the DMRs. Most DMRs aren't full auto, but if you pick up that MK14 and someone's right behind you, you're most likely going to want it on full auto. And then TPP aim camera position. Uh, this is kind of... Up to you guys, but I think your latest uh, peak shoulder is the best way to go so it stays consistent with where you're peaking. Auto reload, I rarely use the auto reload function, but I have it set to enabled, why not? Then we have auto equip scope, so we have the option between disable, sights, or all. The reason why I have mine on site only is because if you're looting through a bunch of different stuff, I don't want to have a six times scope automatically attached to my M4 and then have someone come up right behind me and I'm zooming in with a six times. So to me, I like it that it just gets the red dot or holographic on, especially in those quick situations where you need a scope on your gun to take out an enemy nearby. And then you can manually decide whether you want the three times, the four times, the six times on your gun in that situation. And then similarly here, we have the auto replace attachments. This is if you're switching guns, it just rotates all of the attachments onto that gun, which definitely should be enabled. Then radio message, you should have this enabled so you can ping stuff for your teammates. So there's two options, option one and option two. Option one makes you use the right stick and the left stick so you can't walk while you radio message. So I highly recommend putting this on option two so you can do everything with the right stick. And this is very helpful in uh, marking loot and enemies off in the distance. Then continuous item use. So you could probably have this on all, but I just have mine on bandages only. So uh, it keep, just keeps using your bandages until you're full and it will do the same thing with boosters, but I feel like bandages is where it's at. Then last year we have death cam. So some people turn this off because they believe it might help with crashing, but there's, I don't know if there's any proof to that. And I just have mine enabled for now in case I do want to watch a death cam. And then audio, again, these are all personal preferences. I just have mine all set to uh, 100, but then I do have the lobby music disabled because I stream and I don't want that coming through. And then we have finally the last tab, graphics. So your field of view is your first person field of view. So basically it just makes it like you have a GoPro on your head and you have a wider field of view. If you want it to be narrower, you can turn it down, but then you will have less stuff in your vision. And then we have brightness, so you can do this for all maps if you want to. You can do individual maps, but I just don't feel like doing that. I like to just have it set to all maps. And for the most part, you wanna have it a little bit brighter because some areas are dark and I don't mind having it just a little bit washed out. Um, so again, if you're pretty particular about this stuff, you can go in and do individual maps, which is probably worth your time, uh, but I just stick to a 75. And then for graphics mode, you can do resolution priority or frame rate priority, but really you should only be doing resolution priority if you're playing on like a 4K monitor or you're really concerned about that stuff. Otherwise, because PUBG already has enough issues loading and rendering uh, and frame rate loss, you should just put this on frame rate priority for right now. All right, so that was a lot to go over. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. I don't know if I could recommend you guys just taking someone's controller sensitivities and copying them verbatim, but if you are going to do that, make sure you go into training mode and see how they work for you. It might seem lame, but spending a half hour or hour in training mode, playing around with your different sensitivities, trying out different weapons and different scopes, and make sure you guys use weapons that are hard to control because that will give you guys the best idea of what that's like. Shooting at targets, pretending like there's an enemy, pretending real world scenarios, like for example, is there a guy behind one of these two trees, guy behind the car, how would you take them out? Someone sniping, uh, you know, sniping someone in the distance, 200, 300, 400 meters away, and then go from there. And then in game, you can kind of see what's working for you. But remember, don't switch things around too much because then you're never going to find 
uh, sensitivity that works for you. So sometimes it's best just to stay on default. And then as you play, you go, oh man, my red dot's just way too slow. Gotta move that up. And that's how most people find their sensitivities, at least for me. I did everything on five and default uh, for the longest time. And then after I would have a frustrating death, I would go in and be like, yeah, that's just too slow for me. I gotta move that up. So I think that's the best way. Uh, but if you wanna just copy these, you can. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, you figure out something that works for you. So as always, thank you all for watching. I'm Blitz5 and peace out.